In the land of Canaan, Jacob lived with his 12 sons. Among them, Joseph was his favorite, gifted with dreams and a coat of many colors. Jacob's favoritism sowed seeds of jealousy among his other sons. One night, Joseph had a dream and excitedly told his brothers, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers responded angrily, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? They hated him even more because of his dream and what he had said. Undeterred, Joseph had another dream and shared it with his family, saying, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him. What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? Jacob's favoritism continued, and Joseph's brothers grew increasingly resentful. One day, Jacob sent Joseph to check on his brothers, who conspired to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Reuben, trying to save Joseph, said, Let's not take his life. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. He intended to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. When the Ishmaelite traders came by, Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. So they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, and he was taken to Egypt. When Joseph's brothers returned to Jacob, they deceitfully presented his colorful coat, stained with animal blood, claiming that Joseph had been devoured by a wild beast. Jacob, heartbroken and filled with sorrow, mourned deeply for his beloved son Joseph, whom he thought was no more. The loss of Joseph, his favorite son, plunged Jacob into a lasting grief as he cherished Joseph deeply. In Egypt, he was sold to Potiphar, the captain of Pharaoh's guard. In Potiphar's house, Joseph found himself in a new world, far removed from the comfort of his father's favor. Yet, even in servitude, Joseph's integrity and God-given abilities shone brightly. Potiphar quickly recognized Joseph's exceptional qualities and appointed him as overseer of his household. Joseph proved to be a diligent and trustworthy steward, and Potiphar's house flourished under his care. However, Joseph's virtue would soon be tested. Potiphar's wife, captivated by Joseph's handsome appearance, tried to seduce him. Come lie with me, she said. Joseph, faithful to his master and to God, resisted her advances, saying, How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Frustrated by Joseph's rejection, Potiphar's wife falsely accused him of attempting to assault her. Potiphar, believing his wife's deceitful story, had Joseph thrown into prison, a place reserved for Pharaoh's enemies and criminals. Yet, even in prison, Joseph's character and talents did not go unnoticed. The warden soon put him in charge of all the prisoners, recognizing his ability to bring order and efficiency to the chaotic environment. It was in this dark and desolate place that Joseph's gift of interpreting dreams would emerge. Two of Pharaoh's officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker were imprisoned, each having a troubling dream. Joseph, filled with compassion, asked them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. The chief cupbearer recounted his dream of pressing wine into Pharaoh's cup. In my dream there was a vine before me, and on the vine there were three branches. As soon as it budded, its blossoms shot forth and the clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. While the chief baker described his dream of birds eating bread from a basket on his head. 
There were three cake baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket there were all sorts of baked food for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating it out of the basket on my head. Joseph interpreted the dreams, foretelling that the chief cupbearer would be restored to his position in three days, while the chief baker would be executed. True to Joseph's interpretation, the events unfolded exactly as he had foretold. Yet, the chief cupbearer, once restored to his position, forgot about Joseph and did not advocate for his release. Joseph remained in prison for two full years, forgotten and alone. However, his faith in God remained steadfast, and his gift of interpreting dreams remained strong. Finally, his moment would come. Pharaoh himself had a troubling dream, one that none of his wise men could interpret. The chief cupbearer, suddenly remembering Joseph's ability, told Pharaoh about the young Hebrew in prison, who had accurately interpreted his and the chief baker's dreams. Summoned before Pharaoh, Joseph stood as a beacon of hope and wisdom. Pharaoh recounted his dreams of seven fat cows being devoured by seven gaunt cows and seven healthy ears of grain being consumed by seven thin, scorched ears. Joseph, guided by God's wisdom, interpreted the dreams as foretelling seven years of abundance, followed by seven years of famine. Now therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh proceed to appoint overseers over the land, and take one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven plentiful years, and let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming, and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities, and let them keep it. That food shall be a reserve for the land against the seven years of famine that are to occur in the land of Egypt, so that the land may not perish through the famine," Joseph suggested. Impressed by Joseph's insight, Pharaoh appointed him as second in command, tasking him with overseeing the preparations for the impending famine. As the famine ravaged the land of Canaan, Jacob's sons found themselves in desperate need of food. Hearing that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob sent his sons, except for Benjamin, to buy grain from the Egyptian ruler. Unknown to them, the ruler was their long-lost brother Joseph, whom they had sold into slavery years ago. Joseph, now a powerful official in Egypt, recognized his brothers when they arrived, but chose to keep his identity hidden. Joseph tested his brother's character by accusing them of being spies. He demanded that they bring their youngest brother, Benjamin, to prove their innocence. Simeon was taken prisoner until they returned with Benjamin. When they returned with Benjamin, Joseph arranged a feast for them, but secretly returned the silver they had paid for the grain in their sacks. Then he instructed his steward to place his silver cup in Benjamin's sack. After they left, Joseph sent his steward to search their bags. When the cup was found in Benjamin's sack, they were brought back to Joseph. Judah, speaking on behalf of his brothers, pleaded with Joseph to take him as a slave instead of Benjamin, as Jacob could not bear to lose another son. Touched by his brothers' changed hearts, Joseph revealed himself to them, saying, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Overwhelmed with emotion and guilt, Joseph's brothers were speechless, but Joseph reassured them, saying, Do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. Joseph then invited his family to live in Egypt, where he could provide for them during the remaining years of famine. The brothers returned to Canaan with the news, and Jacob, after some convincing, agreed to move to Egypt with his family. A joyful moment as Jacob was finally reunited with his beloved son. As Joseph's family settled in Egypt, Joseph continued to prosper, fulfilling God's promise to him and his family. Joseph's legacy of forgiveness and reconciliation with his brothers was a powerful testament to the transformative power of God's love. He reassured his brothers, saying, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Indeed, Joseph's wisdom and foresight in storing grain during the years of plenty saved not only Egypt,
but also his family and many others from starvation during the years of famine. His leadership and God-given gift of interpreting dreams were instrumental in this great act of salvation. As Joseph's family grew and prospered in Egypt, they remembered God's promise to their forefathers and the role Joseph played in fulfilling that promise. They lived to see the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as their descendants multiplied and became a great nation. Joseph's story serves as a reminder that even in the face of adversity and betrayal, God is always at work, turning evil into good and fulfilling His promises to those who trust in Him. Joseph's life was a testament to the power of faith, forgiveness, and the unwavering providence of God. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share.